Salai alaikum. Hello. I'm going to Jordan and I'm all alone and you are invited. I'll be traveling with almost no money, with no film crew, no makeup or friends except for the ones I met. Just myself snorkeling in the Red Sea, bring home the fresh bananas, <laughs> climb the Wadi Rum, hike the magnificent Petra, experiencing the local market and sampling all the amazing cheap food. Not to mention, enjoy the warm hospitality of Jordanian people. All done safely, inexpensively, and easily. Anything I can do, you can do. Coming up, DIY Destinations Jordan. We are so fortunate to live in a small world with so many cultures, so much beauty, and so much diversity. The world waits for no one. It's up to each of us to discover its magnificent destinations. I want to make travel accessible to all of us by showing how it can be done safely and inexpensively. The Hash My Kingdom of Jordan is a landlocked country with a population of 10 million. In the midst of a surrounding turmoil, it has enjoyed peace while being hospitable, accepting refugees from almost all surrounding conflicts as early as 1948, including 2 million Palestinians and the million and a half Syrian refugees. That's why I'm here, to experience that hospitality firsthand and see some of its magnificent treasures, its culture, and most importantly, the amazing people of Jordan. We'll it begin our journey from the south, bordering the Israeli-Jordanian border at the Wadi Arabia crossings. I chose this crossing because I was filming an episode for both Palestine and Israel. Prior to 2016, you are exempt from paying the visa and arrival fees through this crossing. Sadly, that's no longer the case. I recommend you get a Jordanian pass, which include visa fees, admission to popular sites like Petra and other attractions. If you are crossing this border, you need to take a taxi to Aquabac downtown bus terminal. However, the taxi mafia here will not allow you to share a taxi. So make sure you pair up with a fellow traveler before exiting the passport control to split up the fare. Remember, pay only the price what's displayed on the board, not what they demand. Most likely, you'll be offered a ride to Wally Run or Petra at an inflated price. So, decline the offer and ask the taxi to drop you off at the Al Quba Tourist Information Center near Al Hussein bin Ali Square. This is where you can catch a red tourist bus for sightseeing around Al Quba, as well as pick up some free tourist maps and exchange your money. I don't know what the most interesting thing to see in Al Quba. The local beach and the White Moss is only a few minutes walking distance away. This is why I met up with our local friend Iyad from Couch Surf. And I heard Kim Abdullah actually come here to pray, is that right? Yes. Elat. This is Aqaba. Mm -hmm. This is Taba. Egypt. Oh. There, Saudi Arabia. Oh, so you can see like... You can see four countries. Four yeah. countries? Four countries, yes. That's amazing. Given the sun goes down at 4 p.m., we went straight to our next attraction only 10 minutes by foot. The Aqaba flagpole located at the Great Arab Revolt Plaza is the sixth tallest freestanding flagpole in the world, at the height of 130 meters. It carried the flag of Arab Revolt and can be seen from Israel, Egypt, and Saudi Arabia. On the floor, you see it. Okay. At the dock, you can catch a boat with a glass floor to see the magnificent marine creatures in the Red Sea. And nearby, pick up lots of sweet dates. Um, sorry, I don't mean the romantic ones. Washing or cleaning like this? Yeah. Yes, Sweet, too much. Right beside the pole is Aqaba Heritage Museum. This unique museum is one of Aqaba's main attractions as it displays large varieties of heritage items and as well as real size model of traditional life in one of Jordan's most important cities. 
uh, the main idea was uh, to keep the original identity of Aqaba city and uh, make it alive. It also contained collection of rare historical images from beginning of the past century until today. Your ticket includes a mission to Aqaba Castle, which is only a few feet away. Originally built in 14th century, it is a scene of a great Arab victory in July 1916, when this heavily defended Turkish stronghold fell to a daring Arab camel charge. Right across is a bus stop going to South Beach. This is where we are going next to meet my host for the night at Dartna Diving Village. The dive master told me it would be foolish for anyone to come here without experiencing one of the two famous activities. So we prepare our gear here and then we go to many different locations. Okay, that's cool. We are rushing against the tide because there's two things we have to do. And that is either diving or snorkeling. It's the best in the Red Sea. Now given the fact that we are, we are rushing time. We got a few sites to see, right? Japanese Garden, Gorgania 1 and Gorgania 2. And I'm really excited. Yeah. Let's go! Go! I didn't stay underwater for too long. After all, November is winter in Jordan. I also accidentally bump into a coral reef and I can feel the salt in my wounds. Boy, they are really sharp. And I also step on a sea urchin and in pain. So, be careful and listen to your dive master. I really love the resort. It has a nice swimming pool, a pub, a bedwin tent, really comfortable rooms, and offer Greek breakfast too. But, I feel the need to explore the town. So Adam picked me up and invited me to his home for tea. I also need to buy a universal socket adapter. By the way, all prices here are open to negotiation, so barking hard and good luck. Did I tell you I'm really hungry and I can eat anything as long as it's cheap? We kind of started the other way around with a traditional Jordanian sweet, Karabi Hello. My, uh, my lovely guy took me to an authentic falafel place and at the same time we picked one of these up. It's really sweet, very popular traditional Jordanian street food, and it's really good. But of course, the famous street food title goes to freshly made falafels. Both Petra and Wadi Ram are accessible by public bus from Alcobad Central Bus Terminal. But there's no set schedule and it leaves when the bus is full. So given my co-host Mohammad Zidan is waiting for me, I opt to take the taxi to Wadi Ram. Finally, we arrive at the visitor center, the first stop to buy your ticket. Given the conflict in the neighboring countries, the tourism are struggling everywhere in Jordan. Mohammed wanted to be part of the program to show that Jordan is safe in midst of a surrounding chaos. I tell them that it's like safe. really safe here. It's more relaxed because it's like even the normal problems you forget about when you get here. And of course, less work for me when someone else is doing the talking, at least introduce themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wadi Ram. Ahlan wa sahlan in Arabic we say. This is the visitor center and it's the first stop you will stop in Wadi Ram here to get your ticket and to meet your guide at the visitor center here. It's Mohammed Zidan from Wadi Ram. I am Bedouin guide. I know everyone wants to save money, but do not attempt to visit Wadi Ram alone. It's really big, extremely hot during the day, and freezing during the night. You'll be in serious danger if you end up getting lost. The good thing is you can compare and make arrangements with lots of inexpensive local tour operators online. But don't forget to read their reviews, and thanks for supporting the local economy. Before tourism, you know, starts, the, the most of people in the army, so, like, many jobs. 
Mohammed talked about how tourism created an opportunity for the local population, but at the same time, it mentioned in recent years how Arab Spring and civil wars in the region devastated this important sector. So this is the Nabatin Temple, and it's made by the Nabatin people. It's more than 2,000 years ago. They like uh, it's like a temple, so they use it maybe for praying for a lot of stuff. And they used to bring the water by the, from the spring, from up, and they used to, like easy walk from the village. Some people do it by camel. They come here by camel, take half an hour, and then they come back. It's good to see it. You can see some more like cleaning. Sometimes we have to do this. You don't come to Wadi Ram, to the Wadi Ram village here. Mohammed also talked about how government neglected to improve the lives of people living in Wali Rum, and most tourists never bother coming here to meet the locals in the village. Not, not in Wadi Rum. So here we are at the Lawrence Spring. You know Lawrence of Arabia, like he was a English guy. He came in the First World War. He made small spring here for the camels because during the war they have lots of camels and lots of horses that they bring to drink water from here. The reason he make it down because the real spring, it's up in the rock, and you see where the big tree up there by the way. It's very important for the Bedouins here because they, it's the only spring in the ground. So all the camels and the horses they come to drink water from here because it's the only place to get the water. We took a quick break at one of the Bedouin tents. Thank you for being so nice. Yeah, welcome to Jordan, the Wadi Rum. My name is the Mishk, doing the, uh, in the shower and after perfume. Very nice smell. Yeah. These Bedouins set up the tent and offer everyone free tea. They make their living by selling traditional perfume, tea, and crafts. But given the state of the Jordanian tourist sector, it's not easy. So, please support them by giving them a tip for their hospitality, or even better, buy something. Canyon here. This area called Kazali Canyon. The, the name of the mountain, Kazali. Inside the canyon, you would see like, you would find like uh, pools, the people before they make it to catch the water. So when they come here and they rest here, they find some water inside. The night before last night it rained a lot and this place always when it rains a lot there is waterfall come through here. This place is it's controlled by the Nabatin. So many caravana pass from here because it's safe area and there is some Nabatin people also they, they like they stay in the area. So they do a lots of drawings. Oh so I think this writing may be more than one thousand years ago. I can read only like Allah it's me and the God, Muhammad. It's talking about Muhammad, so it's after the Prophet. There's no use to make money if you are... I told Muhammad I really miss my favorite winter sport, snowboarding. Well, we didn't manage to find any snow, but we did found an unusual substitute in form of a sand dune. Oh! <laughs> Good try! Yes! Oh, 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 oh! We continue our tour by visiting the Amphitia inscription on a big rock containing some of the best Thematic and Nepotinian inscription drawn by those who passed through Wali Ram on their way from Damascus to Hejaz. Like you see between his hands, mm -hmm. there is a rope, and this used it long time ago. They used it so the camel he don't go far. Because if you bring a new camel, the camel he needs at least, you know, like, two months maybe to know his place. So during this time you put rope in his hand and he can walk around, he can't go far but he still can eat and can drink and you don't have to feed him. We took a lunch break to fill up at another Bedouin tent before climbing one of the famous rock bridges. But don't get too comfortable as Mohammed is going to show me his mad driving skills. I just hope his insurance company doesn't see this. Yeah, I don't know my insurance cover it, but oh my goodness. Oh, 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 oh. We are safe. Wow, I definitely need time to digest my food and wasn't ready for the bridge climb. This is the best excuse I got. So I was dropped out of the Alhama Canyon for some long time 
and the other to <laughs> empty so the sand in my boots. Walk, it takes you half an hour inside the canyon and you will get through to the other side and in the other side they will drive around the mountain and they meet you in the other side. You just do the walk and they will meet you there. Okay. It's very nice walk so yeah. take your time. Okay. Maybe it will take half an hour or if you like you spend you know you take your time. There's lots of things your tour guide won't be telling you and one of the thing is be prepared when you come to when you come to Wally Rum to do this really frequently. Oh <laughs> but my excuse can only last for so long before I'm being forced to prove my manhood. Yes, the bridge climb. So this is Amofrutha Bridge and it's the medium bridge as you see it's the most popular for uh, people to visit because it's easy to climb it to take like five minutes to climb up maybe five minutes. it's an exercise i can do it i can do it yes. oh, i did it so i'm on top of the pillar and and uh, this is magnificent because it's truly you can see the 360 of the magnificent uh, pillar and as you can see you are not going to complain about this view and and the good thing about this pillar is only take about a few minutes to climb oh my all right gosh. and if you're fast enough whoa, whoa. it only take a minute Holy or two smoke. you're running marathons here Before heading to the camp for the night, we need to grab some chickens. And no, we are not going to KFC. They don't have chicken this big, especially made out of rock. We finally arrived at Mohammed's family-run camp. It was actually amazing how fully equipped it is in the middle of the desert. It has really nice clean rooms with power sockets and hot water showers. But my favorite is a beautiful panoramic view of the Wally Rum and the breathtaking sunset from the top of the camp. I'm here in the magnificent Wally Rum here in Jordan in a very special camp. And I'm not gonna tell you why is it special, I'm gonna let one of the owners tell you why this is a very special camp. And from our camp you can see the sunrise and you can see also the sunset. Here. Most Wally Rum tour and accommodation package include transportation to the village, dinner and breakfast. So at night, myself and a couple were treated to a traditional Bitwin barbecue or Zard. It's a meat and vegetable buried and cooked in a large underground pit. It was followed by some traditional Bedouin entertainment in form of a tea, dessert, and music near the fireplace. An amazing, intimate, and authentic experience. So, it's around 5 in the morning and I'm waiting for the sun to come up and do an interval capture. Um, that's a, it's really interesting. First time I play around with um, the interval capture on this camera. So I hope I get the same result right now. <laughs> Mohammed cooked us a nice traditional breakfast before I packed up for the bus to Petra. On the way to Wally Rum Village, he sent me a traditional farewell song. I must admit, I was a little sad to leave this magnificent place. <laughs> I'm ready. It's rolling. Such a beautiful music. <laughs> Traveling month and month at a time on assignments, extremely lonely. So 
During breakfast, I met a beautiful Canadian nurse named Jack and asked her if she wanted to come to Petrol with me. She agreed. The bus leave Wally Rum early morning, but usually the driver waits around to gather as many passengers as possible during the low seasons. Reprogram? So. After checking into our hotel, we took one of their free shuttles to Gita Petra. If you bought a Jordan Pass, your admission is included. Or else, bring a copy of your hotel reservation to show that you are staying in Jordan. Or you'll be charged an extra expensive one-day ticket, which is double the price. Petra is extremely big. I recommend you buy a two-day pass, which costs only a few dollars more. It allows you to come back for the sunrise next morning. The gate opens at 6 a.m. and closes at 4 p.m. The distance between the entrance to the treasury is about one kilometer. If anyone offers you a horse or a donkey ride and tell you it's included in the price of your ticket, it's true, but don't get scammed. You'll be most likely demanded a big tip. If you do decide to take the ride, make sure to always bargain, but do not spend more than 5 Jordanian dinars. Yes. At last, mm. after walking through Sids, we finally reach our first site, the symbol of Petra, the magnificent treasury or al Qasim in Arabic. It's one of the most elaborate temples in the ancient Arab Nipotine kingdom city of Petra. Okay. Originally built as a mausoleum at the beginning of the 1st century AD, its Arabic name treasury derived from the one of the legends that bandit or pirate hide their loot in the stone urn high on the second level. Well, we all saw the popular facade such as the treasury and the monastery, but just remember here there's lots of less well-known ones. What's so unique about the lesser well facade is you can actually walk into it and just see the room and it's a very unique experience and to actually touch the interior, the wall of the facade. Petra remained unknown to the Western world until 1812 when it was introduced by a Swiss explorer. It was described as a red rose city half as old as time. UNESCO described it as one of the most precious cultural properties of man's cultural heritage and included the new seven wonder of the world in 2007 and was also chosen by the Smithsonian Magazine as one of the 28 places to see before you die. Jack and I wanted to get a panoramic view of the city before getting dark, so we hiked up the Jabal Al Kaaba mountain. It was quite an exercise, so make sure to bring comfortable boots and water and more water. It takes about 45 minutes or so, but our effort was rewarded with a breathtaking view. So called the high place. <coughs> well, it is pretty high. I don't know if it's highest in Petra, but let's. Give a shot. And that's my partner for the day. Taking pictures and here is the view that I have been seeing. She has been seeing. One of the great gifts I receive in every trip is the amazing people I met. It always happens in the loneliest times in my journey and just like Jack. I learned that she often travels solo and often to countries that are not so friendly to women. This is the kind of adventurous person I want to inspire all young people to become and to travel without fear and discover new cultures and perspectives. All my life I believe in responsible tourism and one aspect of that is the right of the animals and the way they've been treated. And given the fact that most of the animals here in Petra are m severely mistreated, uh, I urge you not to support this kind of practice by not riding them. I also urge you not to buy anything from children. Doing so will only encourage you not to attend school for short-term income, robbing them of their future potentials. We continue to explore different ruins along the Roman road. 
built by the Roman in the 1st century CE. This was the main road of the ancient city. Just before the sun goes down, we finish our day by walking through the Roman theater. I think I was in Oh my god. What's in here? The rear of the theater. Ooh. Oh my gosh. It's recording? Yes. <coughs> Here I'm actually at Valentine. Well, not quite in terms of finishing our day just yet. After the free shuttle took us back to the hostel, Jack encouraged me to go to Petra at night. It's a little pricey, but she reminded me that it's not every day I'm in Petra and being offered free accommodations with really nice clean rooms. We would like to welcome you to our hotel anytime. Feel at home and you're most welcome. The generous owner at Valentine Inn even offered us all the free drinks and really good dinner. My favorite part is the really cozy atmosphere at night when the Bedouin performers sing and dance. So, don't forget to leave them a nice tip. After dinner, we bought our tickets from the hostel for the Petra at night. And once again, we took the free shuttle to the entrance. The highlight is a candlelit walk leaving the lights of Wabi Musa behind to enter the pitch dark valley in silence. We're talking and mobile phones are banned. This is truly magical. The climate comes as you reach Treasury Plaza, where the candle throw flickering shadows onto the facade as a bit when musicians play on a pipe. The free hostel shallow picked us up really early to see the sunrise, so we didn't get to take advantage of their free breakfast. On our way hike to the high place of sacrifice, Jack started chatting one of the souvenir shopkeepers that sells handmade craft on top of the mountain. Ah uh, yes. Yeah. So flower rock. Yeah. Hot or the rain. The old shopkeeper reminds me how lucky I am. Oh, it's cool. amazing how hardworking are these indigenous Bedouins needed to do to earn a few cool. dollars. At the end of the day, often than not, they walk away empty-handed given the poor state of Jordanian tourist sector. This is the time why I ask all of you to make a difference by buying authentic handmade souvenir to support the local population. But make sure to ask they are locally made, not some fake items from China. <laughs> we met a really cute friend along the way to our final site in Petra. He really liked Jack and followed us for over an hour. He's such a great companion to our journey, and it's too bad we couldn't adopt him. Okay. There's just so much to see, and you can walk forever. We continue to explore the interiors of mini facade and admire its precise architecture of the magnificent tombs. Yeah, and Jack made it, and I can't wait to see the magnificent. He's right there. The monastery, Petra's largest monument dated from the 1st century BC. Inscribed on the ruins interior is believed that the structure was dedicated to a symposium of Obolus, the god. Right across is a little cafe, quite overpriced. We met a group of American tourists, including a couple on honeymoon. We didn't have time for coffee since we want to follow a path to see the best view of Petra before saying goodbye to this beautiful place. Hello. 
After two wonderful days together, Jack and I parted our ways when she accepted a ride to her next destination in Jordan from our new American friends. There are many local buses that leave when it is full, but also fixed schedule buses operated by Jordan Express Tourist Transportation or Jet Bus. It costs twice as much, but given our committed filming schedule, we had no choice but to take this ride to Amman. Initially, when arriving at Amman's Abdali station, I supposed to take a taxi to one of the three stations for bus to Malaba. The taxi should cost two or three Jordanian dinars, but I realized I missed the last bus. So luckily, my host also have a hotel here, and I end up staying in Amman's boutique hotel for the night. These are my laundries. So I washed a little bit last night and put it here. So there's something that you can do as well. Wash your own laundries. Really great way to save money. This hotel is located right in the middle of the city. So right after my complimentary breakfast, I walked to the Rakadam bus station near the Roman theater for my ride to Madaba, about 30 kilometers away. However, there's frequent buses from all the three Amman's main bus station. The other two bus stations being Walata and Mudajirin. Finally, we arrive in Madaba, considered the city of mosaic. The city yeah. is extremely small, so you can walk anywhere by foot. Our first stop is St. George Church. This is a Greek Orthodox church containing the famous large Byzantine era mosaic map of the Holy Land. The mission is 1 JD. Right around the corner is a Brent Palace or Martyr's Church. The mission is free and you get to see the luxury mansion built in the late 6th century and destroyed by fire and earthquake in 749 AD. You will see the remains of beautiful mosaic, a reminder of its former glory. Well, it's really quiet here today in Malaba because it's Friday. Now, I'm taking you here because this street is unofficial name is called the Atian Street. The reason, according to my guy, is called this street is its unofficial name is because there is large amount of local handcraft and workshop display can be found here, and they range from hand wool traditional Jordanian rug to carpet and silver jewelries and so on. So, in other words, if you want to support the local economy, definitely you have to come and check out and perhaps buy something. Along the street, you'll see local craftspeople and artists in process of production, including Malaba's famous colorful hand wolf carpets, and it's the only place in the world where you can witness the making of a mosaic and purchase the handmade product. I can work with the flower. When you finished, I am put it inside the frame with cement, upside down. The Holy Land of Jerusalem. This is Damascus Gate, Jerusalem's Gate, Golden Gate. Uh, Holy Sepulchre Church, the Roman Road, or Another magnificent church is a shrine of the beheading of John the Baptist. The church sits atop of many caves and currently being excavated. The church bell offers wonderful view of the city of Malaba, and the mission, only one Jordanian dinar. The only place that requires a taxi is Mount Nebo. It shouldn't cost more than 2 dinars and takes about 10 minutes. It was mentioned in the Hebrew Bible as a place where Moses was granted a view of the Promised Land. The view from the summit provides a panoramic view of the Holy Land, including Jordan Valley, Jericho, and as far as Jerusalem on a very clear day. There are many other wonderful religious sites in Malaba, including the Church of Apostles and Jesus Christ Mosque. However, I'm a little hungry, so make sure to eat before 9 p.m. as there's limited choices at night. Actually, there's only one shawarma restaurant open late. If you are planning to lose weight in Malaba, uh, good luck! Not with the warm local hospitality which includes constantly giving me free food. But don't worry, even if you have to pay, the cost of food are a lot less here than in Amman. 
One of the specialty is fire. It only costs 50 cents. This is beef with cheese and meat. Ah, okay. Cheese with the bread. In the morning, I was treated to a really nice in-house breakfast and get to thank the owners in person who offer me complimentary accommodations in both Amman and Malaba. Malaba is the perfect city to use while uh, traveling to Jordan because it's only 30 minutes from the airport and near the Dead Sea and from here you can visit Petra and all the other attractions. To my surprise, the owner Ada and his friend Fabi, two proud Jordanians, wanted to kidnap me for the day to show me some of the hard to get places. They both demanded I show the world these magnificent sights, but don't worry, you can go as well. After all, Ada also runs a local tour company called localtrips.net. Our first stop is Bethabar, meaning the House of the Ford, place of crossing used by many versions of the New Testament for this site. John the Baptist preached and performed baptism, including Jesus the Christ, here. Many areas borders Israeli-occupied Palestine, therefore our professional equipment was confiscated, but our secret tool is our fully charged smartphone with a really nice camera. There is a water, the water is coming like tube, you know, it's going and it's going to all the baptism pool really in the third and the fourth uh, century the first of the pools uh, under cover <laughs> so my guy told me this is a very interesting cave because uh, the monks actually built this avoid the soldiers and also as well as the animals wild animals the wild animals and it's interesting because there's like room to prepare food just like a kitchen as we can see in the back it's the bedroom yes but no mattresses or computer or internet. Oh, no, I, I can't do that. <laughs> but yeah. people manage to do it thousands this of years. This place for one person. One person. No more. And the, I think one of the most important places is where the church, in this cave, there's church. You can take a look up here. Yeah, it's one room church. Did he actually drink here? Like, does John the Baptist actually drink here? Yeah. You can drink water, you can drink it from here, but not now. Of course, as Bible telling us, the river of Jordan was uh, huge and flooding. For that, this church, what we see, it was 54 columns, and it was destroyed many times by the flooding of the river. And uh, for that, uh, as Bible telling us, the first evidence that this is the place where Jesus baptized is from Bible. <laughs> so this is a very unique side because you get to see Israel that side. Oops, it's actually Israeli occupied Palestine on the other side. I could have gone inside the river but because I wasn't prepared, I think I didn't stick out here, but I can't tell you water is not too cold. So make sure you get make sure you have proper clothing right here. And do you get a lot of Russians coming here to stay yes, here? <laughs> Before leaving the Baptist site, oh, the Fadi wanted to show me a clear evidence of a Russian invasion in the Holy Land, including a magnificent Russian-style pilgrim's house, a Russian church within, beautiful Russian women pilgrims, which are obviously spies, and all this orchestrated by the mastermind President Putin. Hopefully, I get paid for sharing all these latest intelligence with the CIA and MI5. Russians not only have their own church, but they also have their own bap uh, Baptist site. And this is the same river that's on the other side, where the Israeli border, it's same water, same temperature, except for lots of Russians coming here to get baptized. The trading people Keep it in some special place. Fali also wanted to take me off the beaten path and wanted to show the world that even in the hostile desert environment, Jordan still proudly produced its own food. First evidence, banana farms. So bananas actually require really clean water. And so, so this is all filtered water. And I have no advice. I cannot just drink it. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to, I hope I don't show it. Oh. 
I mean, we thought this was a desert, but we're standing up with surrounded by bananas. I never had a banana this fresh. <laughs> okay, um. Mmm. Mmm. I have no complaint about this banana. Okay, ready? Man, do I get paid to do this? I wanted more bananas, but I was told I had to work for it. So, no free beads. I succeeded. I think I'm. Uh, <laughs> what happened? Hey, I did it. You're having this for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and next morning, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We better have some pretty nice recipes to cook with all these bananas. <laughs> That's just like my farm. The second incriminating evidence, oh. the indoor greenhouse with vegetables and peppers. Would you of course, all, uh, would you some quality control is needed. We actually export to all the girls. It's amazing, you can just take one of these, take it out, and eat it. <laughs> is it free? For me, free? I think I have to pay for this, by the way. But it's good. He invites us to eat and see. And Third, fruit, lots of sweet giraffes. Yes, they also request me to be a willing volunteer for the quality control. Take one and sample it. Oh my god. Oh wow. Holy soup. Oh, delicious. Oh wow. First we had the banana, now I have giraffe. I don't think. I think. I'm not going to lose weight by coming here. We end our day by getting rid of something on my bucket list. Visit the Dead Sea. It's hard to get here by public bus. I recommend you meet some new friends at the hotel and split up the cost of a hired driver or share a tour to visit Mount Nebo, Baptist site, and the Dead Sea together. On the Jordanian side, this is a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful Dead Sea. Now, there's many private beaches you can go to that cost about 12 to 20 GDs or so that has amenities such as shower, house, and um, other amenities. However, if you're on budget, you can come right here. However, getting in and touching the Dead Sea, it's free and it's priceless to feel. I also taste it. Not a good idea. You like Canadian? If you really want to try the camel ride, make sure you bargain really hard because initially they asked for 10 GDs, now it's free. So, as you can see, it can be a win win experience. But make sure the animals don't appear poorly treated. What I like about it is that there's no tourists, and what you see is real, real life. Anna gave me a ride back to Amman, and once again he took me off the beaten path. He showed me the Suq o Sukul, translated into sugar market, located in the center of Amman, stretches from Jordan Museum to Roman Theater. The zero tourists come to here, and it's really unknown to in tourist uh, books or tourists coming here. From here to the right. So there's the zero foreign tours. That means you won't be paying the tourist price here. You will find the freshest fruits, vegetables, spices, clothing, and a lot more at the cheapest local price. You will also find freshly squeezed juices, desserts, and local cuisines that tourists typically don't eat. Well, I'll dare you after you hear this. You don't eat really normally in the sheep. This is the stomach and the intestine of the sheep. This is uh, the stomach, he has a lot of small stomachs. This is the head, if you can see the teeth and the, his eyes. This is a spine, but it's all filled with uh, spices and uh, a lot of tasty thing. Uh, this is the liver, uh, this is the feet of the sheep, you can eat it, it's all like gelatin. This is like a assorted dish of uh, food. And it's the same thing. Shamefully, I'm not brave enough. I will settle for some traditional falafels. Typically, street falafel only costs about 50 cents, which definitely fits my budget. But Allah's tour company localtrips.net also offer falafel walking tours. So he's taking me to the best falafel in Amman, located just nearby. It has opened. 
it started like a spoon. Okay, so, so and you put and you take the hummus and you eat. I ended my night with a visit to the exterior of one of Amman's famous landmarks, the Roman Theater, a 6,000 seat structure dating back to the Roman period when the city was known as Philadelphia. The admission also includes Jordan Museum of Popular Tradition on one side and the Jordan Folklore Museum on the other side. In the morning, it's time to experience a shared taxi in Amman. There are stops for these special taxis to pick up passengers. You share the fare with other passengers going towards the same direction, and the directions are printed on the side door of the car. The costs are typically half dinar, but lucky me, I experienced another Jordanian hospitality when one of the fellow passengers insisting in covering my fare. Uh, Abdullah, uh, welcome to Jordan. Thank you. Today, I'm going to the North Station to catch a minibus to Jiraj, our final destination before leaving this beautiful country. The fare for these public buses are really cheap, but they leave when it's full. Sometimes it can be frustrating waiting for them to get going. Located some 48 kilometers north of the capital city Amman, Jiraj is known for the ruins of the Greco-Roman city of Jirasa, known as Antioch on the Golden River. It is sometimes misleading referring to it as Pompeii of the Middle East, referring to its size, extent of excavation, and level of preservation. Now, this is uh, the Oval Plaza and the main purpose of why it's being built is to connect the main city of Cardo and the sanctuary of Zeus. Jiraj became an urban center during the 3rd century BC and a member of a federation of Greek cities known as Decapolis. And overlooking it is the great temple Zenus. The Cardo is a heart of ancient Jurassa with a 600 meter colonnade street that runs through the entire length of the city. It was once lined with the city's major buildings, shops, and residences with a complex drainage system that lies below the stone pavings. Be sure to look for that chariot track in the stones. Finally, the impressive ruins of the uh, Temple of Artemis, dedicated to the patron goddess of the city. Finally, it was my last night, but there's just so much to eat, so I wasted no time in search of a delicious, cheap food. Now, it's pretty late when I arrived here in Amman, around 9.30 or so. So one of the first place that's still open to the public street food and uh, this is Turkish pizza, so I'm gonna give it a shot. It's pretty inexpensive and for the amount of business it has, it should taste pretty good. Let's give it a shot. I'm not disappointed at all. One of my weaknesses is sweets, and there's no way I'm leaving Jordan without trying some of their specialties. It's a sweet, Jordanian sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what is inside here? Is peanut? Inside the uh, cashew. Cashew, okay. Yeah. Cashew. This is, uh, it's an ingredient, halbe. Halbe, you know, halbe? Mm -hmm. Beans. It's so, butter. So it's healthy, right? Yeah. Okay. It's very sweet. Inside cinnamon. Yeah, inside cinnamon and sugar. Mm -hmm. Like this. Sadly, it's time to leave for Queen Anya International Airport from Amman. I recommend taking the Airport Express bus from the North Station, which leaves every half an hour from 6.30 a.m. to midnight. It's approximately $5 each way. Jordan has overcome many challenges, and despite being surrounded by neighboring conflicts, 
It has shown peace can be possible through valuing and being tolerant of all its diverse populations. As we have seen in Wally Rum and Wally Musa, its bitwin population has embraced change but also has maintained its root in spiritual and cultural traditions. I encourage you to visit this country and experience its magnificent land, from sleeping under the star to seeing the impressive city of Petra. Most importantly, experiencing the hospitality of its people that goes beyond serving the needs of tourists, but has opened its heart and its land taking care of millions of neighboring refugee fleeing conflicts. I'd like to sincerely thank my host for providing me with accommodations, food, and tours. This show will not be possible from the local businesses and the wonderful people of Jordan. I'd like to end this episode with a quote by King Abdullah II of Jordan. Together, we can create a world in which peace is real, in which every human being can thrive, in which all can share the promise of our century. I believe we can succeed. Thank you for watching and shukran.